Welcome, everybody, to the Dad's Doomsday Guy. We are pleased to have today Brett Griffith and Frankie Frank, paranormal welcome. people welcome, welcome. of the highest dimension. <laughs> you, wow. The highest wow. dimension. <laughs> so I good. guess, yeah, what do you, I know you guys come from a little bit different backgrounds in terms of professional experience. If you guys just take a second and let everybody know kind of who you are, what you do. What you're good at. You, you want me to take you that go one? first. So I'll field this one for you. Okay. Yeah, you field it for us. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, my name is Frank, and uh, I'm one of the hosts of All Things Paranormal. I guess my background would actually be uh, a demonologist. So I studied under the Catholic Church, lived in a uh, monastery. Can you picture that? Wow. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, so yeah, no, and we made beer too. Uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> we made beer too. <laughs> that's what we did. <laughs> You, you plant stuff, you make beer and bread. I'm in a monastery. Francesca. Did you wear the white collar? <clears throat> no, no, no. That's a different type of... Were you in training? Was that... and Yes, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so for people who and, don't know what kind of the monastery and all that process entails... Like, it's what do you very do? simple. Have you ever been to jail? <laughs> yeah. Because God's found there too. But it, it's kind of really the same thing and the uniforms are all the same. You wear these brown robes. You can actually wear like regular street clothes underneath, uh -huh. but... They kind of prefer you to, uh, how do they put it? The less you have of society around you is the more or the closer you are to God. So okay. basically some uh, boxers in a brown robe. Yeah. But one, well, of the, we, one of the exorcists we just interviewed actually was a friar. Was a friar. And he was oh, having the brown yeah. robe. Because it's, yeah. it's generally, uh, well, you have the Francescans, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what I was. Um, you know, I, I just like studying religion as a whole. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just about that. I mean, because I lived for uh, a period of time uh, in Salem, Massachusetts and studied under Lord Cabot, which is way different than, you know, Catholicism or the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So that's witchcraft or the Wiccan religion. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way back to Druidism. So, I mean, I studied like every single religion out there to try to see if there was some form of uh, – Basic belief. You, you see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. if you have – you can have multiple different religions, but there has to be something at the core mm -hmm. of it all. And I found it. There, There is a God obviously in every religion, but my God's better than your God. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of how that all worked out. And, yeah. and, and it's, 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 it's kind of sad in a way because uh, it really turned me off to modern religion mm -hmm. as a whole uh, just because I seen so much um, – there's a fancy word for it, and I'm not a fancy guy. Disappointing, uh, and well, not just disappointing, but you know, uh, here's a good example. I'm not going to say the church because it was here in Los Angeles, but anyway, I left. I left the church, okay, and uh, I'm standing outside, walking, getting ready to leave, and there's a homeless guy sitting there. Okay, now anybody who preaches the Bible is a basic understanding of the Bible. Even somebody who doesn't follow the Bible still understands the basic principle of what it is, and that's to do good by man. Right Now, how can you be in church? You just went through an hour of devotional and the preacher talked about how beautiful and great things are when you follow God. And then all of a sudden you walk outside and the security is throwing this homeless man off of the campus because he can't be there in front of the church. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's when I looked at it and I said, this is, I mean, don't get me wrong, not every church yeah. is that way, but we've seen it with Joel Olstein. We've seen it with many other different, you know, uh, churches. They run more as, a, as an organization to make money right. and, and not really following the principles of what the Bible was So the hypocrisy. About. Exactly. There's a lot of hypocrisy. And the <laughs> funniest thing is, is I think God knew that was going to happen because he talks about hypocrisy in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. But that yeah. doesn't seem to be anything that, you know, I've seen any preachers <clears throat> preaching on. Yeah. I think too, when you get humans involved... There's an yeah, air. Just, they just screw up things. There's yeah. an air. Well, in, yeah. in, in second, if the other part of it is, is, you know, the, the Bible was written, Catholicism was created about a hundred years after Christ died. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's when it all came to fruition. All right. So we have the New Testament now. Mm -hmm. This is a better way to live because Christ died for your sins. Well, if you read the old manuscripts, you're going to find out that it was Jewish people. He was a Jewish person. He was more, in, in my opinion, from what I read, and don't get me wrong here, everybody's got their own opinion, mm -hmm. but I think he was a martyr. Uh, I think that, you know, if I tell a group of 20 people sitting in a room a story about a guy, by the time it gets back to me, it's not the same story mm, I just right. told. So yeah. how can somebody, you know, uh, who had never met Christ, which is everybody in the New <clears throat> Testament, nobody ever met him, mm -hmm. but they wrote about him. Mm -hmm. And these were hundreds of years later. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, I look at all these things and I see how it's just basically, in my opinion, used as a tool to control man. Now, does that mean that a God doesn't exist? No. And does that mean that there isn't a light and a darkness to the path of life? No. 
That's right. the reason why I do what I do today is to find that that meaning and mm-hmm. to bring a little truth out there. Because yeah. you know, we're, we're so happy to believe in many things, including Santa Claus, but we won't follow. <laughs> you know, we won't we won't follow it to the T and find out what it's about. Yeah. We, we are oils. a society. People we, believe in essential oils too. Yeah, yeah. We're we're a society that 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 we're more followers than we are leaders, and mm-hmm. that's the reason why the few yeah. leaders that we have keep it so corrupt mm-hmm. because yep. it's easy to do. That's interesting. Yeah. We've talked about it a lot just in terms of like finding the truth of what all these religions profess and everything in it. And I want to get back to that kind of later because it's an interesting topic to kind of a little bit of a rabbit hole to go down. Um, a little bit of a rabbit hole? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a few of those. Thank you. <laughs> but um, but as fast, so that just led you then to find doing kind of the same line of work, but didn't being more open to all the other religions and all the other kind of teachings out there in terms of finding that truth and what you feel is the struggle between light and dark or what you can help people with? Uh, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you, if you take from the religious side, but you also got to study the scientific side of life mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and in the scientific side of life through the many years of evolution and the, the many years of uh, medical discovery and, and so on and so forth, we've realized that the human body functions off of electricity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we seem to be prone to electrical activity. You know, this, you go downstairs into a a basement and the conduit box is leaking electricity. What do the people usually say as a symptom? I feel somebody behind me. I feel sick to my stomach, you know, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Headache, nausea. Sorry. That's okay. (laughs) Exactly. So, you know, you have to look at it from both ends of the spectrum. So if there is an electrical field that goes on here, we all know from a scientific fact, you can't kill electricity. It has to move on someplace else. It does not die. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in my opinion, I don't know about Brit's opinion, but in my opinion, I believe that electricity is the soul, is the memory. Like if you have a little, you know, a SIM card, mm-hmm. you know, it's all stored in that. Yeah. And so that gives you either residual activity, which is the tape recording, just goes on and on and on, same stuff, never interacts with you or nothing like that. But then you have, you know, uh, manifestations or you have, you know, uh, intelligent hauntings. These are things that communicate with you sometimes not nicely, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, sometimes they're just trying to tell a story. Like people freak out. Oh, that moved, you know, freaking out. Oh my God. But sometimes it's just the spirit trying to communicate with you because it has no other way to Mm -hmm. communicate with just saying I'm here, Mm -hmm. you know, well, we all know that, that, that electrical, it has to exist so in my opinion, we take from the religious aspect and the scientific aspect and we can say, hey, there's something out there. Now we just got to find it and now we just got to get people to believe in it because we've been so wrapped culturally in either A, you believe in the Bible or B, you don't believe in anything. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like one or the other. Exactly. There's no middle ground. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, Britt, why don't you, you want to. Well, yeah, I mean, that kind of goes into what you, I your background. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy in the corner? <laughs> I don't know. But, just like the show. <laughs> But you have a lot of experience with ghost hunting because of Ghost Hunters, the show you were on for a long time. And kind of, I guess, ex- explain your experience about that. And if you want to go into kind of what's real, what's not real, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, are you talking about on the show? Don't um, ask him about well, orbs. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't get me going down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> so obviously, I mean, that's where most people know me from. That's where almost everybody that will watch this know me from is the TV show Ghost Hunters on Sci-Fi, which mm-hmm. is now on A&E. Oh, yeah, um, they keep moving it. Yeah, they right? keep moving it. Well, you know, that's yeah. kind of the way it rolls. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how that worked, but it did. Whole new team, except for Grant, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me, like, like Frankie has this, this, this deep background knowledge, religion, what he just laid out. What I brought to the table was the equipment side. I mean, I grew up, I shouldn't say I grew up, 16, 17, 18. My dad and stepmom owned a house that was holy sh- Am I allowed to cuss on this? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 perfect. Okay. Let her Holy rip. shit, off the wall activity. Mm. And it was my stepbrother lived there full time. My brother lived there full time for a year. And then um, I was there every other weekend. We would literally be downstairs and we could see like this walkway between the two rooms upstairs, vaulted ceiling set up. And we would watch this old lady looking shadowy thing walking back and forth, doors opening Jeez. and shutting, stuff moving. Um, wow. In the room that my brother and I, when I was there every other week and my brother was there, it was a wall-to-wall mirrored closet. You open up one, there's like this little midget door. Oh, you can't say midget. A <laughs> uh, little small. Little mid- person. Like this little small door that went into this kind of really cool storage area that was drywalled and everything. And it never stayed shut. I mean, you could pull it and it would latch, and, but every morning you get up, it's open. Oh, my weird. brother one night, because he was freaking out, he's there alone, you know. He put a coat hanger from the coat hanger bar to the door, wired it up so it would stay shut. Three days later, it was pulled through. 
Oh, and you wow. can see where like it did the spring routine as the the wrap was pulled through. So there's some force there that my you know. So at the time we didn't say crap mm-hmm. about it because we didn't want our parents thinking we were smoking pot or something. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean which, we were, but were. we didn't want them to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, a couple of years later, we're at Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner or something. And we start talking ghost stories for whatever reason. I was like, "Hey, remember that house over on Pinewood? The weird stuff that happened." And then my dad and stepmom started talking about the experiences they had. So that's what made me go, "What is this? What's yeah. going on here?" I mean, the dog freaking out. The dog wouldn't let us upstairs. My dad telling stories. My dad was a cop. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd be downstairs. Kids would be gone. We'd all be gone. Whatever. And he said, "It sounds like someone was moving upstairs." He'd get his gun. He'd go upstairs, expecting to see someone broke in, going through shit. Nothing up there. So it was like, that's what kind of made me go, what is this all about? Mm-hmm. And how do I document this stuff? Mm-hmm. And then I turned 18. I moved out of the parents' house. And it became beer, girls, and just partying like a rock right, star. Right. You know, and work and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I met a buddy, Dave Walters, down in San Diego. Just work, whatever. And we are just telling ghost stories one day. And he's like, and this is before Ghost Hunters was on the air. Mm-hmm. This is like when ghost hunting was like, you're a geek. Yeah. yeah, everything was in the closet. <laughs> no one talked about it. It was like this weird secret, you know. Um, and he's like, you know, I got this little team that, you know, we try to help people out. You, you know, you seem like you're into this. You should help us out. Mm-hmm. So I joined in a little ghost hunting team. We sit at Starbucks and try and figure out how we're going to, you know, how do we get in that building? They say it's haunted. And you go and you ask the owners, like, oh, you're crazy. Get the hell out of here type of thing. But we started getting into places. And my thing was to get the gadgets. I wanted to prove it. I mm-hmm. wanted to. Until we can install the UB, USB port in the back of our head to download what we're experiencing, mm-hmm. everything we say, everything a psychic says, is all personal experience. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing you can do with that. We've got to be able to document that somehow mm-hmm. that removes the human element from it. Mm-hmm. So I was all about the gadgets, uh, you know, just monitoring the environment, the EMF fields, the temperature fields, the barometric pressure, the static electricity, anything I could do to monitor the environment. Mm-hmm. Because whenever paranormal activity happens, it goes into flux, the cold spot. The theory behind the cold spot is that it's using the heat in the air to do whatever it's going to do, and it leaves a cold spot behind. Well, we can measure that. Mm -hmm. And as long as an air conditioner doesn't kick on, if that side of the room is, you know, 80 degrees and this side of the room is 50 degrees, that's not normal. Yeah. It's just not normal. Yeah. So, or the barometric barometric pressure is very steady. Unless you got a fucking hurricane going overhead. Yeah. And it'll die. Hopefully you notice the hurricane to debunk. (laughs) But if the bare pressure all of a sudden starts going wacky, Mm. why is the environment going into flux? So I was all about the gadgets, the gadgets. How do I document this stuff? And one thing I noticed is that we would go do these investigations and I'd be so into my equipment that personally I would miss all the cool shit that was going on. Uh And the whole team, oh, did you see that shadow? Did you see that? I didn't see because I was so focused on the equipment. Mm -hmm. So I had to train myself to set the equipment up and then step back and personally intake it while the equipment's doing its documenting because that's always going to be there yeah. type of thing. So that's kind of what, that was my history. And then, you know, I met Jay and Grant at a paranormal event, became friends with them. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm 35 years old. And they're asking me to come out and help on the show in this really big case, season four. It's like, yeah, sure, I'll take a week off of work and go do that. Hell yeah, why yeah. not, you know? Yeah. I was so good. I got cut out of the entire episode. <laughs> it's, it's a Wright Patterson Air Force Base episode. You see my knee, you see my foot, and you see my elbow. That's it. <laughs> but for whatever reason, somebody in production, the network, they kind of like me. I'm a jumpy guy na- naturally, which makes me good for TV. Mm-hmm. Um, you, and you literally made a joke about tell us what was real and not real. I cannot talk to the other shows because I was I'm not on them. I've all, I've heard the stories, I've heard the you know all that stuff, but I've never personally. I was not on the show, so I can't personally attest to it. Yeah. All I can say is with Ghost Hunters, and then when I was on Ghost Hunters International for a season, we never faked anything. Out mm-hmm. and out, hey, we're going to put a string up here, we're going to pull this, we're going to do that. Yeah. Got someone knock over. That didn't happen. We didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. Enough weird crap happened that we could react to it. Now, did we ever get stuff wrong? Absolutely. There were times when we got stuff wrong. And then a team would go in by, they see the episode, and they go into the place behind us and investigate it, you know, 19 days in a row. And they would figure out, oh, you know that thing you said was a shadow and the ghost? That, that, yeah, you guys totally got that wrong. It's, you know, on day seven, we figured it out. It was a car coming down this hill, and when this street lamp's on, it kind of flickers just right. It bounces off this, and it hits that. Uh-oh. The stuff that we didn't have time to do. Mm-hmm. So we kind of get some stuff wrong. That did happen, but we never outright faked anything. Um, plus, we didn't have the budget for it. Correct, Pelagian. Yeah. <laughs> so, so everything was so, legit. Yeah. But trying to, you had to document, I don't know where I'm going with this, I'm rambling now. But anyway, so I ended up on the damn show. I've traveled the world. I've been in almost every state. I've been in 13 foreign countries. It's been a hell of a ride. Um, I mean, but for me, I, I mean, as much as I like the ghosty stuff, the history part of it was far more interesting to me. The buildings that we went into, the stuff okay, we yeah. had to touch. I mean, so I, I'm not allowed to say this, but 
I'm not on the show anymore, so fuck it. Um, <laughs> we're doing the old state house in Connecticut, and the Connecticut that 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 there's an area. It's a museum now, but it's where George Washington negotiated with the French for the extra troops to win the Revolutionary oh, wow. War. It's behind red velvet. This, the building didn't burn, so all the furniture is original. The stuff that George Washington actually sat in. It's a Brent table. All that stuff's still there. So when no one was looking at 3.30 in the morning when we're cleaning up, I stepped across that fucking room and I sat in George Washington's seat and just took it in that this is where our country happened at. Did you get a picture? No. Uh, yeah. I, would, but I was alone. I was, yeah. But just, just the fact. And, and those from the Pentagon that are listening right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, request whatever. to Britt Griffin. You can yeah. find Britt at. <laughs> exactly. But the fact that I got to sit where our country was formed. I mean, think about it. We wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for exactly. that moment, you know? That's pretty cool. You know, I got to, we did the Baseball Hall of Fame, got to hold Cy Young's glove, obviously with white gloves on, but, you know, yeah. I got yeah. to see the last home run, the last bat that Babe Ruth hit a home run with, you know, that kind of stuff we got to, just the stuff we got to do was fucking awesome on the show. I bet, yeah, yeah traveling, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. so I, have, I have one question. Right, yeah. I don't want to go too off topic here. Why no, not? go, go um, off topic. Yeah, I know, right? So we did a, a seance, and we don't usually do those, you know, for the podcast. Right. We did a seance, and we interviewed in... Uh, a priest for exorcisms, but during the seance, and this is leading up to actually what I want to talk about. We did a Ouija board. I don't really believe Ouija boards, but tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> it flipped, we flipped it over and it was chalk. It was a chalkboard basically. It's, uh -huh. I don't know, but Patty, uh, if, cause you're familiar with her. Right. I don't know if you've done it at her house, but it's the chalk part where it's like basically draws oh, okay. the images. Yeah, you draw the, yeah. 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 And it draws. So we all had me and my buddy, um, his friend and, we all, there's four guys for like, an, I don't know, was it 45 minutes? A good portion we of the first part, there. nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing happened. And I'm literally barely touching it like this. And then it started moving and it just started making this circle and it got more aggressive. It did it a couple of times. Got gnarly aggressive. It got it like just spinning just circles. Spinning. I was like, that's weird. I can't explain that. I don't no, know if you got, and it happened, and you're 100, happened you're 100 multiple sure times. it wasn't fake. Yeah, you're 100 percent sure you looked it over. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no, all wood. No, no the table was on. wood. We opened it up. There's chalk. There's nothing inside of it that we could see. And I know there's, you know, there's a... The planchet was just metal. It was like an, like, uh, I don't know if it's iron or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, is. I know there's a, the part out there about it being psycho or subconscious. Yeah. People yeah. are moving it. And is that... Well... Have you, you know, ever I, seen I a mean, real I mean, Ouija board? I, can it be cheated? Yes. Um, is Patty that per... No. She does. She would never do that. No. no so it it's just what, what it is there is uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, you know, a spirit electrically can, you know, it's moving. It's using you basically is what it's doing. Right. To, to create the image. Me, myself, I don't really use tools of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, my tools are more things to... Uh, <clears throat> invoke a spirit right i guess is what you would say so i use uh devices uh good example uh the hollywood sign pagan whistle mm -hmm. you know when i investigated the sign myself uh with katie burr um i used music that would have been of her period okay to invoke gotcha. activity mm -hmm. and it works and, and you know I've seen it multiple times, and that's why I really like using it. I've never really been into Ouija boards. I've never really been into, uh, you know, using a chalk planchette or anything like that. It's just that's you, not really my. Do you think yeah. they're dangerous at all? They can be absolutely. The, You're the Ouija board. Portal. You asked the question: Have I, have we ever seen a real Ouija board? The reality is, a Ouija board. You can draw one out in the sand and use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything in specific. It's correct. Basic. The thought process behind why they're dangerous is you're opening yourself up. You're inviting something else that's out there that we have know nothing about to come in and control you. Mm -hmm. So you're opening yourself up to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's control my hands to move this thing, to do it. So, yeah. You know, that's like, what's like creepy. I use equipment. So it's like, I'm telling it to affect that over there. Don't touch me. <laughs> yeah. Right? But, but mess with that over there. Well, that was the thing is when I relaxed, it would move. If I was very conscious and aware, it wouldn't move. Yeah, that's kind of where, where, where we're supposed to run in your subconscious. And, yeah. And, and some people use a pendulum. You know, mm -hmm. they'll hang it like this and they'll have like a yes or a no right here and they'll allow the pendulum to just move it back. It's more of a direct question. Are you here with us? It'll sway to yes. But again, too, uh, you know, I personally, I mean, those tools, dousing rods and stuff tend to work for certain people. Me, I don't use anything like that because I would rather invoke the spirit and actually do just like he does, have him manipulate other objects. Yeah, when you're using like the, like he said, the pendulum or the dowsing rods. I use the dowsing rods too and that worked, yeah. Th there's a human element in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even subconsciously, you're kind of, as, as steady yeah. as you can hold your hand, you still might, you know, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they start doing stuff and you're getting weird readings and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm talking to, you know, whoever. <laughs> and, and really it's just, you yeah. have poor muscle control of your hands, yeah. you know, or if you're holding the pendulum and you're doing this thing, I mean, you, you, if you're a charlatan, you can control it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and even if you're, as you're swinging it and you're getting tired and, you know, whatever, you can start making changes and you think you're getting something you're not. Yeah, right, right. What's interesting to me is if you have a stand that you hang the pendulum from and then you step back and you're like, okay, move that to yes. And then with no one touching it, it, you know, rocks yeah. to yes. That would be, that would make me, you know, shit a Twinkie or something. <laughs> you know, because that would be well, cool. There's a, a retreat center that uh, my dad works at and it's probably what, from the 1850s? Probably early 1900s, 1900s, maybe late 1800s. It's like a Spanish style house in Lafayette. And it's very, very old and it's kind of creepy, you know, just the way it looks. But anyway, we kind of set up in one of the rooms there, a podcast. And uh, the day before I was using the bathroom oh, and uh, Chipotle, Chipotle, yes. <laughs> so I went, I went I, <laughs> you guys go outside and play. I'm going to be in here for a few minutes. <laughs> so I use the uh, bathroom, wash my hands and there's two doors. There's one door in it, and adjacent to that door is a room. And then the other uh, door is a staircase in the outside. So I heard a knock on the door on the other side, and I thought it was my daughter. I was like, whatever. So I peek outside, and I look around the corner, and she was not there. They were all outside on the grass, which is a good 100 yards away. There's no way she could have knocked and ran out right. there, a three-year-old, you know? So I was like, that was super weird. It was like good four knocks, like like that. Like, it was a legit knock. It wasn't a door moving or shaking or plumbing or I anything. Thank God it was four, not three. <laughs> <laughs> I think I knocked three, too. Yeah, you did. Um, so then we did our podcast the next day. And did our little thing in there. And then we left and my dog was with me, a German Shepherd. And she stayed in the room with us the whole time, which she usually does. So when we were trying to leave, she kept running back to the room and sitting inside the dark room by herself. Like probably five times. She it did was that. creepy. That was more creepy to me because it's like, what is up with that? Well, yeah. It, like she never does that. Like Pets, she, pets and uh, children tend to see things that you can't see. Okay. Is there any explanation to that? Just like oh, an innocence? What yeah. is the... No. Yeah. It's, um, it's a, there's a scientific explanation to oh. it, actually. The human eye, we as humans, we we see like this is the spectrum of light. This mm-hmm. is the spectrum of light. Um, I'm making a big wide rainbow for those just listening. <laughs> <laughs> we literally see just a human hair sliver of it. Okay. When we're first born, we see just a hair bigger, a hair wider. Interesting. As we age, our eyes age, as you did when you hit forty. Right. Um, <laughs> that vision starts to tighten up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then obviously, as we get older, the other the other thing that's interesting is why people see stuff out of the corner of their eyes, and when you look at it, it's not there. Mm. The edge of our eye doesn't age as fast as the center, hmm. believe it or not. So, and then the other thing is the brain does this weird trick because the brain hates confusion. Mm-hmm. So, like literally, it will like it, most of us don't realize it, but there is actually a blind spot in the center of our vision. Mm-hmm. That's where the uh, the retina attaches and all that stuff is a blind spot, but the brain doesn't like it. So it just fills it in with everything around us. Whoop, we'll just fill that in for you make it look. So like weird shadowy shit. If like you're totally against it and it's like you're saying you've never experienced anything. Right. The brain will just tune it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, make it disappear. It's like it's never even there. Huh. The main's an amazing thing. So there is a reason for that. Animals see wider in the spectrum of light. So it's quite possible that we could just be sharing this planet with something that just lives just outside of our vision or yeah. outside of our vision. Yeah. Every now and then, like when it rains, the water comes down, we see a rainbow because it's like diffracting the light to where we can see the breakdown of the collars and light. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe there's the weird moisture hits just right, the matrix glitches, and we just get a glimpse a little wider than we're normally used to and we catch something. I gotcha. Because shepherds are very good at listening, very good at, um, like she comes to me all the time when I call her, I'm like, I'm her person, but it's like someone else was calling her. Yeah. Into the room. And I'm like, what they the hear, hell? They hear wider than us. They hear yeah. higher in the frequency zone, lower in the frequency zone. They see wider. They So if someone's got sense. a pet at home, they can trust if their pet's acting weird. Because I've had my pets not want to go in rooms before in a house that I thought was kind of haunted. And I'm just like, they just stare into a dark room. And like, I'm just I like, going nah. in there. Probably a good reason for that. <laughs> you yeah. might want to listen to that pet. <laughs> Let's move. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. You guys touched on Patty would never fake something. Exactly. And you guys' experience, how much is faked, how much is real when you start going and investigating things or trying to help people with maybe like a possession or something going on where they're haunted, how much of this actually turns out to be legit? Well, I can tell you as far as like exorcisms are concerned, uh, because of all the bad cases that have happened over the last, you know, hundred years or so, uh, any exorcism that actually is, uh, sanctioned by the Catholic church has to have a doctor in attendance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, things have changed. There's also with, a lot of research that. that goes into it also yeah. at that level mm-hmm. to make sure that it's not just some. Mm-hmm. Now, when, so you, you, when you, sorry, I was going to say, so when you would get, so at that level, it's probably, there's enough evidence there to believe this is probably true. And now our lower level. So when, well, with exorcisms, there's three different levels, Yeah, you know, so you've got to, they've got to be able to complete all three of those different levels before it's ever even considered by the Catholic church. Uh-huh. 
Uh, other than that, you know, I mean, some people just have, you know, I don't know. This is where it gets weird for me because I believe that most people who have mental disabilities are, conf are conflicted. Okay. You know, and that's right. kind of how I see them. Um, but, you know, for a doctor's stance on that, it would be multiple personality disorder, schizophrenia. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we have medical terms for everything today. Right. Uh, but mine from the religious background and from my studying and everything, I just see things differently. Than so you feel like something is present there on I think, top I think, of the I think bad spiritual energy can give you a heart attack. A bad spiritual okay. energy can give you cancer. I think, you know, I mean, again, it's the electricity affecting, uh -huh. you know, I mean, how many people walk into a place that was haunted or live in a place that's haunted? And the first thing that they say, you know, is um, when I come home, I feel depressed. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel angry or I get angrier at things that, you know, I never would get angry about. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's that dark energy. Yeah. And that's kind You're, of putting its energy into your energy, consuming mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Because it, it, that, it, that for that thing to manifest itself or to communicate in any way, there's got to be some interchange of energy. That's really scary then. So um, how would someone yeah. know between normal depression and something that you would feel is something more? Well, how mean, are you when you're outside the house? Yeah, how are you when you're outside? You get okay. outside the zone. And then there's also natural environmental stuff that will affect you like that too, like high EMF. Like if your mm -hmm. wiring is not grounded properly, if you live with the, the high-powered lines that yep. – you know, we see cut through neighborhoods and whatnot. And did you uh, eat paint chips as a kid? <laughs> yeah, you know, but being, there's that too. Um, so there's, there's, and that's the stuff that you have to rule out, and that's what the paranormal investigation brings. You ask about fake, you know, people faking stuff. People, I mean, in the beginning, before Ghost Hunters was on the air, fakery really wasn't there because it was so taboo. It was you mm -hmm. talk about it. Right. Ghost Hunters hits the air. And, and all of a yeah. sudden, everybody's haunted. You know, everything's going on. Hey, I want to be. And then you get to people who that, this is their claim to fame. This is who they are. So it's like, hey, look at me. Look at what I have. Mm -hmm. So they want their place to be haunted. Yeah. I mean, I can remember. This is before I was on the show. The show was, you know, like in season two or three. We would show up and they'd go, where's Jay and Grant at? <laughs> God, there's so many people what? I can throw under the bus right now, <laughs> yeah. but I won't. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, you know, so you. As a, par as a local paranormal team, you have to get good at screening this stuff because, yeah, there are people that will fake stuff. There are people. Sure. I mean, there were in investigations that I did where, you know, we, we go up in the attic and we look around and they don't, they're they going up in the attic. And there's a like speaker wire. Running. What the fuck's the speaker wire doing here? Oh, why is it right. dropping down? Because I'm a contractor. Why is it dropping down on the center of a – oh, uh, they put a speaker in there. Geez. Oh, we got you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, people do do stupid stuff like that. It's not as prevalent nowadays. Yeah. Um, as it was back then when the hoopla was really big, when the show first came out and it really exploded. But yeah, there were people that did that and it was, it was a task for the show. I mean, it was a task to, oh, I, bet. I mean, we actually had a fleet of producers here in Hollywood actually that, I mean, the questionnaires that they had to answer the, the site visits, the, um, but then it got good. I mean, it's kind of interesting with the show. It's, you know, the first season, I mean, it was like out of 13 episodes, what three had activity. I mean, it was, uh, it was yeah. actually the first show. I was like, wait, they just went investigating. They're telling us nothing happened. What the? But that's what gave it its authenticity. But what happened is it aired about halfway through season two being filmed. And then all of a sudden, they started getting the phone calls and the emails and the, mm -hmm. hey, uh, my place is really active. Here's the evidence that I've documented. These little groups started sending the production company, hey, we've investigated this house. It's, it's pretty active. Here's the evidence we got. So all of a sudden, our screening yeah. for a show that wanted activity got really good. So all of a sudden, you notice the end of season two, season three, it was a lot more. Season four, it was like almost every episode had something going on. And then by season five, everywhere we went, for the most part, had activity because it was pre-screened. Yeah. You know, we had this this huge dragnet of all these teams all over the country just sending us stuff. And so the show, with the big budget, being able to hopscotch around the country and whatnot, we were able to... Uh, do a lot of active locations, which was great for me because yeah. I mean, we're doing two investigations a week, 300 days out of the year. I was gone. It was yeah. a lot of, so, a lot of investigation. And that's, that's why, that's why a lot of these, uh, shows that you watch now on TV tend to go back to the same places that you saw 15 other shows go to <laughs> right. is because that's where they're getting activity. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if they, if they go out and they do just people's homes, well now, like Britt said, you're kind of dealing with whatever is going to happen there, you know? And yeah, it's, it's, so have you guys ever experienced anything that's, that scares you? Like, I know with all your background in religion. Divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with ghosts, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Yeah, actually, because you guys scared, have done it so much. Scared you're not is, scared? I mean, I, I get startled. I am a jumpy dude, which is what made me great for TV. Uh, the production uh, network, they loved it because 
I would react and jump. And that's mm-hmm. what they wanted. So they get their act outs. We didn't fake anything, but mm-hmm. I just I just jump naturally. Um, he scares the hell out of me sometimes. But um, <laughs> but to be scared and run out and go, you know, dude, run. <laughs> Brian, oh, God. Dude, run. Brian. Throwing um, your gear. No, never. Yeah, well, something, never done that. Well, maybe let's say demonic. And, and like with your background, you probably nothing. The most I wouldn't, concern I wouldn't say anything gets, startles the, you, right? The Not most really. concern I've ever been is was actually on air. It's the old city jail episode, which was in like Tennessee or some shit like that. But our producer got attacked. I mean, like literally she was there doing their thing. Adam and Amy weren't doing their thing. And the producer was like, I got to get out of here. Something's burning me. And she gets Whoa. outside. She has these scratch marks on her hands. She's like, what the no hell? Shit. So then we looked up her arm, more scratch marks, all on three. And we're like, look at this. What the hell is going on here? Well, she wanted to go back in and confront whatever the hell this thing was. So we, they mic'd her up. Oh, and wow. we went back in. This is all on air. And we are literally watching. Like, she pulled up her shirt and we're literally watching her back and the scratch marks just appear. No she, way. She, what? Yeah, it's there. Mm-hmm. It, it, that is the most. I was so freaked out by that. I started texting Adam Bly, who's a demonologist for the Catholic Church. I was like, dude, what the hell's going? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So what's what are the rules? Tim and I have talked about this. What are the rules between the supernatural world and here? I mean, you're saying they can come up to killing you? I mean, because depending Absolutely. on who you talk to, it's like they won't, they can just oppress you or make you depressed, but they won't like murder you. But what's, I mean, well, they're not like, going to get a knife, knife, get a knife or a gun and <laughs> yeah. shoot you or stab you. But, what is that that? but they, they infect you internally. Okay. You know, I mean, that's that energy that I was talking about. That energy flows. You, we got constantly, uh, what is it? Uh, I brought it up on one of our shows before. Oh. Uh, Particles. I would call it the God particle. Remember? God particle, yeah, yeah. This is stuff that's flowing through your body right now as you sit here. Mm-hmm. You don't even realize it, but it's passing through your body. And that energy comes along with that. So if you're in a place that has very negative en- uh, energy mm-hmm. uh, and it's documented, you know, you stay in that environment long enough. It's like if, if you lived in Chernobyl, mm-hmm. you know, right, yeah. stay there a week and see what happens to you. Mm-hmm. It's you kind glow. of the same it's thing, cool. you know, <laughs> for a while. Kind of, kind of the same thing, though, in the, right, the paranormal right. community. So um, the, the threes, like that's the Holy Trinity. Right. Now, why would a, is this a demon or what mm-hmm. is? Okay. Absolutely. And they're just mimicking? And I don't always or? think it's a demon demon because, I mean, there's, there's, there's hundreds of different demons that are actually through the, the, the Bible. Mm-hmm. You're going to go all the way back to the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian scholars, okay? There's di- many different demons. Um, I don't always think it's that. I think that if you were a hateful person in life mm-hmm. and you're, you know, violent and angry, you're yeah, going to be so. the same in the afterlife. Yeah. And, think about it. Old people are cranky. And, and now, now, you're, now you're this person for eternity. So what are you going to do? You're going to wreak havoc on anything living mm-hmm. because you're so upset, you know? And so you're going to bring along all that. I, there's, there's so many shows out there that, that kind of touch on that too. But yeah, it's, it's, I see it the exact same way. You know, if you're, if you're in a negative environment, you know, think about this as a really good example. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm really happy this morning. I got up. Yeah, this is really great. And then all of a sudden you're whoever, you know, is around you is like, yeah, I don't get to do like that, dude. This, seriously. Can you just shut up for five? All of a sudden it starts to bring you down. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So now you're negative. So you were positive. Now you're negative. You walk out into society and now you're already pissed off. And now you're talking to other people and you're bringing that negative act. Ne- next thing you know, you come back home. And you're like, this day was crap. Yeah. Because everybody was rude. Mm-hmm. Well, again, that's that energy. That's yeah. the same concept. Their energy is affecting mm-hmm. your yeah. energy. You know, same concept. So well, then, you know what will yeah. do that too is um, like, because uh, my job is I'm, I'm a cop. So mm-hmm. that will do it to you. Like Yay. a bad day there will just tear you apart. It's like Cody. You, yeah. And by the time you get home, you're just so, I mean, you just need a buffer. You know, like an, I need like an hour. I need to go work out something to make myself feel better. Depending on what you're dealing with of the day too. I mean, some days are better than others. How would you... Uh, when you're investigating, both of you or have been in on investigations or when you're looking at somebody who says I'm being oppressed or something, when you're seeing scratch marks or seeing violence towards someone, when do you start thinking this is demonic and when are you, this is a pissed off spirit? It depends on what the activity is. I mean, demons, uh, from my experience, demons don't, <laughs> demons don't, excuse the French, fuck around with people that aren't religious. They just don't. And the reason why is because let's say you were in the Super Bowl of Super Bowls. You're going to win the medal. 
do you want to go after the weakest team or do you want to go after the real prize, the toughest one? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if it could be somebody of, if you look at really throughout history, as far as the Jesuits have shown through exorcisms, they're the ones who created it was the Jesuits. So that's where the right comes from. And uh, if you look at all the people that were afflicted, none of them were non-believers. Every one of them were very high in their faith. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, look at the Warren files and all right. them. They all talk about it. Every one of these people had strong religious backgrounds. Now that's fun for a demon. That's you a five point saying? antler shot exactly. right there. That's, that's going after the big glory. And those are the ones they want to corrupt. Hmm. Now, if you're an atheist, a non-believer or, or it's like shooting they're a like, you know, yeah. yeah, they're just like, why, yeah. why, why, yeah. what's, what's the deal? You're not corrupting. You're already corrupted, obviously, yeah. right. in their Hooker, opinion. You, you know, see what I'm saying? Yeah. On drugs. Yeah. So, yeah. so right. when, when you, when you get around somebody who claims that they're afflicted by a, a demon and everything, look at their lifestyle. And it'll tell you right away if it's, if it's in my opinion, a, a, a demon issue or it's just a bad spirit or maybe they're just fucked up people. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you got to look at all exactly. of those yeah. things. And you know, sometimes you don't know. Yeah. Well, Until I, you're really deep into it. I yeah. tell this story. I think I've said it like three times, but I got to tell you guys. So <laughs> this, is my, yeah. yes. <laughs> this might be something we edit out. Go Score. Ahead. <laughs> so this so is, just a, this before, this is just a weird moment. In the, when I worked in the jail, which I hated, oh, yeah. um, there was this little guy that walked around the module and they were giving us people from another jail that were mentally disturbed because they didn't have room for him. Right. So we wouldn't even know it, but he was walking around talking to his shoe and he's in a, he's in a module with 120 other men. He's not going to last long. He's either going to get beat up or severely uh, injured. So I put him in a room by himself where he was locked up and I could monitor him. PC. Correct. Mm -hmm. He ended up tearing apart that room, tore off the sink and he's like five, seven, maybe 145 pounds. Ripped apart the sink, was jumping off on top of the sink, cut himself with a piece of broken mirror. And was smearing, which to me looked like satanic shit. I don't know. It was like circles with like kind of like pendulum stuff inside. I didn't want to analyze it. But when we opened the door to move them out, uh, we saw it on the doors. It was on the walls. That was probably one of the, I was creeped out by it, but we were dealing with so much. I was just like, what the fuck? I was just attributing it to him mental health. He's crazy. You know, he's psychotic. Two things could be true there. He, it could be he's just mentally into stuff that he's ingested over his life, reading, watching TV, movies. Right. And doing that because whatever. He's going for the, the psych award Correct. of the year or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the mentally, when your brain is off. I mean, let's step back. You go back to the Native Americans, and when they would do their, when they would want to reach out to their ancestors, they would do peyote, they would do the uh, the sweat huts, mm -hmm. they would they would alter their brain so they could get into the spirit world, open right. themselves up to the spirit world to reach out to their ancestors. Right. Mm -hmm. So think about that if you're mentally off, you're in that realm permanently. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe the other side of it is, yeah, he was possessed some, by some something was dealing with him and some people him. just don't come back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Check out, don't come back. It because it, it just didn't make like if you're crazy, fine, but why go there? Like why do that? That's what I was questioning after. Yeah, that's that's why I'm saying because you, you know in most <laughs> demon cases that I've seen, they don't tear up rooms. They don't do mm -hmm. anything like that. It actually it's more of a consumption of soul. Uh, because by the time a person hits the uh possession part mm -hmm. of this, they have no recollection or memory of anything. It's they're not there uh. no more. Jeez. And it's the the demon that's there. And the demon would rather taunt you. Now, I could totally see it if, you know, this guy would s always stand at the window or whatever. Right. And he would taunt you because see, demons know your demons, your darker side. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they'll taunt you with it. And that's why in exorcisms, it's generally a good idea not to speak to whatever deity is there. Um, just go through the right because it's going to throw things at you, you know, kind of like what the exorcist, you know, that's based off of a true Catholic uh, um, exorcism that mm -hmm. happened here in the United States. They changed up the names and the sex of the person and everything else. But I can tell you that that, that little boy is what it was. Mm -hmm. That little boy, when they moved to St. Louis, Missouri, this demon came along with them. Now, this demon, when it was going through its little period of messing with people, anytime somebody religious came in there, you see what I'm saying, like the father, so on and so forth, to go through the blessings, it would find its deepest, darkest thing to manipulate it. And that's what they would do. They're not going to sit there and throw chairs around and, yeah. you know, just act weird like that. Right. Their whole point is to corrupt does that make sense? Yes. You touched on that, and we had that conversation with the other, the Catholic exorcist. And I was, I, I didn't ask him when he brushed by it, and I wanted to. 
So when you're not allowed to talk to the demon, because you said it's forbidden by the Catholic Church to speak with it or too much outside of a few things. Is that just because they're going to learn things about you or they're going to tangle you up in something? They're going to tangle you up and mess with your mind. And their whole whole goal is to keep you off of what you're doing, which is the right. Okay. You want to stay focused on that and stay in chant because the more you keep that going on, it's it's like pouring acid on the demon, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. that's painful to this entity. And so if it can stop you from doing that, even if it's just for a few minutes, it gains back its hold. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, not all, you know, like in the exorcist and stuff like that, it was over in a, you know, a couple of days. Well, the real exorcism of of that one there took years. Wow. Uh, So, you know, it's not like something that goes away right away. So in your experience, what have you encountered? Um, I can't really talk about those things, but. No, I mean, in a a vague sort of way, not Um, details or anything, but. Well, like I said, like I said, like I said before, you know, it generally has to do with people of extreme religious backgrounds. Okay. And, uh, that's, I think that's the reason why we have, in my opinion, it's probably going to be weird, but in the Catholic church, (laughs) I I think, I I think, (laughs) uh, I think that's why we have so much corruption in the Catholic church and Catholic church is one of the biggest churches in the world. Mm -hmm. And it holds some of the, the, uh, darkest, darkest secrets. You see what I'm saying? Of Mm -hmm. man, uh, there's so many things in in uh, in, the, in the Vatican basement that you just can't possibly fathom. Yeah, you know? and I think that that's why you know biggest cases of molestation come from the Catholic Church. Oh yeah, I hate to yeah. say it. No, it's true. But it's true. Weren't they and, uncovering thousands of bones or something exactly. underneath recently? And they were like, "What the hell is all this?" Exactly. <laughs> there's been a lot of things that have come along with it, and yeah. I think that that just shows you that no matter how upstanding a church, actually, the more upstanding a church can be. <clears throat> the bigger target it becomes. Right? Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, you know, man, I mean, unless you're Jesus Christ and, and you know, you're walking on water, you're just yeah. a man. Yeah. And so you're corruptible. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you do. You are a corruptible person. Well, we, we were told this by one priest and we, I can't even say who it is or what, but um, he said during an exorcism, he knew a guy that Wanted to observe. Be very vague. I'm very vague. He told us, don't say this. Ever. Don't record it. But I'm saying it. So uh, he walked into a room during an exorcism, just an observant. That's it. And uh, the person being exercised turned around, looked at him and said, I know about the woman and I'm glad you're here. He said, I'm I'm glad you're here because I know about her. Yeah. He was having an affair. That's that's the tricks. It knows. It's a demon. It knows everything about you. You see what I'm See, saying? H- how? Are they watching you or how are they right here? Like maybe they're right here listening to us right now. Oh, it's man, like, I hope they're not watching. Yeah. Me. Cause like, <laughs> oh, geez. How does, I'm, I'm going to give them therapy. <laughs> I think, I think that, I think that energy again is a chain, okay. you know, just like we plug in the little chip here and now it tells all this other stuff, what to do and everything else. I think that we, we, we put off that, that energy and it's, it's almost like uh, a spiritual, uh, like if you went to a psychic medium, you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? A real psychic medium, and this is the reason why it was considered uh, demonology by the Catholic Church and banned. Uh, but, you know, there are some psychics out there who can see things about you mm-hmm. and can see other people around you. And they get stories and they hear things. And then that's why they ask you. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there going, how in the hell did that person know that? That's impossible. And you ain't talked about it with nobody. Mm-hmm. But yet they clued in on it. Well, don't you think a demon would have that power, if not more? Right. Of yeah. course. They've been here since time itself. Mm-hmm. So they know more about you than you know. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, why do we give credit to God in that same principle and say, God, he He knows everything that you're going to do before you do it? Right. Well, yeah. Satan knows everything you're going to do before you do it too, because he comes from the same place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a fallen angel. Mm-hmm. Right. So he was the right hand man. He knows all the tricks of the trade. And so does the rest of his little minion, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, you get, that's kind of my explanation on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would that's be terrifying. Spooky. You know, if someone knew something <laughs> about me that, I, that nobody knew. Well, I could tell you right yeah. now, if you knew everything about this world right now, if anybody knew all the secrets that were being hidden, mm-hmm. I mean, via right. the government or the Catholic church or yeah. anything like that, you couldn't control. And religion is based on what? Control. control. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you lost control of everything and now you knew all the secrets, What's the point of living? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But I mean, because it's chaos. I mean, if exactly. you do everything, because that's, I think that's why the government, especially government too, like they just keep certain things. They tell you what you need of, to know. Yeah. 
to set for society to maintain the status well, quo, right? Yeah. Well, it's just interesting to look at those. You guys watch those Tic Tac videos the military picked up of those things zipping around and vanishing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Did oh, you yeah. guys watch yeah. those? I think that was done on purpose, the, the release of it. it I wasn't. thought they were drones. You thought they were drones? Well, I thought so they, too, but then... But the Navy's you, officially said we don't know what that yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, they would, if, they could, if they could off that off as drones, they probably would have. However, I think, I think that the, the governments of the world because it wasn't, what, just two years ago, three years ago, France let their stuff out. Mm -hmm. Two yep. years before that, Russia let their stuff out. Now we're starting to let our stuff out. I think Mexico I, had I, some, too. Yeah, I think so, Recently. Too. Yeah, I, I think what's happening is the governments are trying to prepare us as a society. I mean, maybe not necessarily America or the Western countries because we're pretty educated. And mm -hmm. if a UFO lands, we'll be, ah, okay, you know. Yeah. You know, but like, but think, about the, but think about the third world countries where people are just, they're not educated. They're just, and all of a sudden there's this, you know, V spaceship up in the air, you know, or what was the other movie with uh, down in Johannesburg they did where the thing landed and the aliens were in it? Oh, yeah. Uh, Section 8, something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Section 8 housing. <laughs> Section, <laughs> Section 8. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was. But my point is, uh, the government, I, I think they're trying to prepare us. I mean, all of a sudden yeah. we have the Space Force. I mean, I mean, I know. That, well, that, how, yeah, well we've weird, we had huh? Star Wars since Reaganomics. Yeah, I mean, we had Star True. Wars. And, and I mean, we're like, it's like we're preparing yeah. for something. Well, I read an interesting article that. And heard Peter Cullen people talk, but if you're into occult stuff, you'll have a higher rate of experiencing either paranormal and a UFO or uh, like demon haunting, all that stuff across the board. Do you guys find that to be accurate? Do you find those two UFOs and kind of more of the ghost things mixed? I'll tell you right now, I totally believe that uh, aliens are gods. And I believe that, you know, aliens can also perpetrate uh, harm against other people utilizing the information that they have on hand, i.e. the Bible, uh, to corrupt. So, yeah, I see things in it because, like I said, I studied religion. So I see things in a whole different gamut than most people do. And so you generally don't get into it with people because <laughs> yeah. like, they go, oh, yeah. well, you, you got to believe in one or the other. No, I don't. <laughs> I, don't. Yeah. I can believe in both. But I think, that, I think they're connected. And the way that he has studied the Bible and really gotten into it. I'm a super, super political junkie. Mm -hmm. Like I watch C-SPAN. Oh wow! I read, I read think tank papers. <laughs> that is, I, you know, I'm I, with Bible span. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I literally am so immersed in it that it's all, it's almost like I see the Matrix. Okay. Remember when Theo first got the Matrix and all of a sudden he saw it and he goes, yeah. "Oh, so I don't look at anything." The way that you probably look at it, mm -hmm. you may be more than him because you're on the inside the city. You see a lot of bad shit, yeah. um, and how the government just works and fucks people. Um, you just see how it's not all what it's not all. It's not what people see, you know. Yeah, exactly. you know, I mean, like because I watched C-SPAN, which was, was my first big clue to the media being what the media is. They tell you a story, not the story. But I would watch C-SPAN, the politician would go blah 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 blah, blah. and then I would watch Fox News, and they go blah 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 blah, and I go, oh, and I switch over to CNN, and I go. Well, well, Fox News wasn't close, and CNN oh, yeah. isn't close. It's complete odds because I watched it, and yeah. so oh, uh, well, oh, you're all the same puppet master yeah. doing your, sh yeah. you know. And then we, now we, with the advent of the internet and all that stuff, and talking heads and podcasts like this, yeah. What now? You, all of a sudden, it's like, huh? But now my my rule of thumb is, if a reporter puts a report out and they don't footnote it with the source material, so I can go to the documents, the court documents, the government documents, the FISA or the. Uh, the uh, Freedom of Information Act stuff. Yeah. If I can't go to their source stuff, I don't believe them. Mis right. Misinformation is so easy because you can yeah. just, whatever you're watching, you're getting fed that perspective. Absolutely. Well, so, and just like I said, how many of us are leaders and then how many of us are followers? Mm -hmm. It's a mass majority are followers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for the last, you know, five presidents, they've controlled and done whatever they've wanted, all the wars they want to get rich and where yep. the money goes. And I mean, but if, but if you don't take the time, because it's a lot of work to yeah. take it all in. Because I have people who, I'm a milk toast fence center. I think mm -hmm. both sides are corrupt, so I'm right down the middle, so I <laughs> right. piss everybody I mean, it, off. Yeah. But yeah. to have someone who's fairly liberal or fairly good, they go, "Well, tell me about." It's like I don't have nine months to lay this all out. For yeah. Because it's that big. Yeah. It's it's like so like him with religion. He's like got all this different angles. A and lifetime of knowledge it. can't be told in an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> people are going, "God, you're crazy," <laughs> you know. Certifiably, five yeah. states. Yeah, I start spewing my stuff with it. You tie this in with this person, that person, this company, this corporation, this NGO. This you start, and you start pulling out paperwork and stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, oh God, you're crazy. Stay away from me. Yeah. So well, it's just, just what they don't know. They're scared by it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. No well, and that's just know. the human nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've had it so good for so long. Yeah. Yeah. That and we then you're just like stuff. 
Here you go. And then I talk, I talk about, because you were talking about the aliens earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I don't want this to be crackpot, but here, here <laughs> it goes. There. <laughs> here it goes. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and this is, and, and this is just food for thought. So all your listeners out there, you know, take from what we take from what you will and throw the rest away. It doesn't matter. Um, Do your own research. But yeah, yeah but, exactly. but here's, here's exactly. the thing. Um, you look at, okay. This is a time when society obviously didn't have answers for many things. So if I seen something coming out of the sky and I'm in the uh, dark ages, I'm going to look at that. And when I do the hieroglyphics on the wall or I chisel into my wall or whatever I do to leave my mark, I'm going to talk about this fiery thing that came from the sky. Mm -hmm. I don't know it is a UFO. I don't know them as aliens. I'm going to look at them as gods because what did we do back in that time? We prayed to anything, the mm -hmm. water, the land, the trees, the wind, the sun, the mm -hmm. moon. These were all a part of, these were gods. You could do it through Egyptian. Uh, you could do it through, uh, you know, Native, Native Americans, Americans, the Aztecs, the mm -hmm. Mayans. Great example. Aztecs, Mayans, and Egyptians. Many, many ways apart from each other. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, one, not one, on the other side of the world. Right. Yet they created the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. How is same that drums. possible? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So you got to put two and two together and you can't allow society to tell you how things are your government to tell you how things are or, mm -hmm. you know, anybody. You got to do this. You, you were put here on this planet to figure shit out. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. Yeah. You know, I work in the paranormal. You know, he works in the paranormal. You guys, you know, you you love the paranormal. You don't believe in the paranormal. Um, I, I, yeah, I've experienced the paranormal. I do. I haven't experienced but, it, but I do. But, but, the, I do. but the biggest thing is, and the moral of the story is, if you take anything away from here, get out there, figure it out. Don't let other people tell you how it is. You have to do your own research. You absolutely you know? have to do yeah. your own research. And you can't just watch one news source. No, yeah, you have to, you have to watch a yeah. lot. Yeah, people say all the time, oh, well, you know what? These these people, you know, with a PhD from Harvard said that, you know, this is not the way it is. So they've got to be right. Mm -hmm. Oops, no. What? They're human just like you. Just because mm -hmm. they got a piece of paper doesn't make them smarter. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have an agenda. You know? It's true. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. They have an agenda. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys feel about, so we're talking about the UFO stuff, kind of that dimension, kind of like kind of you alluded to, kind of living on top of us and things crossing over every now and then popping in and out. And that's why we the see veils. things. Yeah. yeah veils. So is... Are these things coming from the same place or is this UFOs are something different? Aliens are something different well, and now put, demons are something different. The reality is none of us know. Yeah. Let's put it this way. We've discovered pretty much everything that's land-based, correct? Mm -hmm. We've right. explored everything. We've only done less than 5% of the world's oceans. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that an, uh, an intelligent creature like an alien – where do you think they would go? They're not going to land and, and hang out here in like Nevada. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Right. They're going to go underwater and they probably have their own communities that are way, way deep down in there where humans can't go. And they know that. Yeah. So they're not going to get screwed with down there. I mean, we found so many things that, mm -hmm. that, that prove that. I mean, there's there's documented uh, videos from the military yeah. of crafts that they've caught flying into the water and have no yeah. clue what the hell it is, you know. But you could see it literally running under the water and whoop, right back up again and take off and disappear. Yeah, yeah it's one of those pilots was talking about that. Yeah. His friend was a helicopter pilot and they were – he was pull, basically his job was to pull up like oh, missiles and stuff from the ocean. And he was pulling up one, and there was a diver on a um, on the lead or whatever it's called. And as he was pulling him up, the windows where his foot pedals were, he could see something coming in up out of the water. And he's like, oh, shit. So he pulled up his diver buddy, and this, like, whatever ship or whatever it was pulled back down the missile. It latched onto it and yanked yeah. it back down. And just pulled it right it back down. And he was it. like, uh, we're at it. And he, he just left. But that was like, I think, I don't know if that, what time era that was in. I, I think it was, was a decade ago. Yeah, so. I think it was like 90s or something like that. But and the other ones were hovering over the water. It's yeah. interesting. It's all to do with and, the yeah, ocean. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. tends to stay around the oceans. And now you look at like, okay, we have these land masses now that some places look like runways and so on and so forth. Do you know? that the world was predominantly covered in water, there was very small pieces of land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the water retracts from the, you know, back into the ocean or whatever, and leaves these land masses, now all of a sudden, you know, you've got these things that are existing that you're asking yourself, how the hell was that put there? Mm -hmm. Who did that? Yeah. You know, and I'm not talking crop circles because that's retarded. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> no, you know, you can't so say that. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> 
Anyway, we, we said midget and retarded. Yeah, yeah. We, we, in we one show. That's okay. You can't say either one of those words. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but but you know, again, too, that's just using your brain and not listening to outside opinion on that. Using your your, your everybody, every human being is has a, a system built inside them to detect bullshit. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And so you know. And you can use that and listen to it, hone it, you know, work it, make sure that you're, you're tuned in to what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that you, once you do that, you'll start realizing that it's like a puzzle, but it's all coming together and it starts to make more and more sense, Right. Mm -hmm. you know, and now, now you can come with some knowledge and be able to say, this is how I see things. And now you can become that leader mm -hmm. and not the follower because you took the own, your own initiative to get out there and research it, mm -hmm. do it. Well, you're talking about the like religion, like I took a history of religion class in college and that was super interesting, like just learning, but there were so many similarities between all the religions. I exactly. found right. Yep. Like, I mean, you have much more of a knowledge in that than I do, but just from this brief semester class, I was like, holy shit, like each one throughout time still has at its core. They all God. believe in that one yeah. entity, Yep. you know, all the way back to the Egyptian times that mm -hmm. one entity, it's every, it's got multiple different names. Yep. But it's all the same yeah. thing. But then when it boils down to it. Oh, my God's better than your God. Yeah. Oh, last I checked, your God's the same God I have. What the fuck is your mm -hmm. problem? And then you we're going to kill you guys yeah. and we're going to yeah. slaughter you. It's yeah. Like, what? what? All, like, the, all the world's wars, famine and all the other stuff. Where yeah. does it come from? It starts with religion. Mm -hmm. Look at any of your history more and you'll see. Have been killed by, history, more people have been killed in the name religion. of God than for any other reason. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which my is God's insane. better than your God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just, I mean, well, going back to when you were training in the seminary, right? Mm -hmm. How long was that? I was there a year before oh. I, I realized I like sex. <laughs> <laughs> and not with his hand. <laughs> yeah, not with my hand. And Is we didn't have a computer, so no mental images. Oh, just the ones you created. So like, you know, your mom's friends, you know, yeah. that type of stuff. Well, go on, well, go on. No. <laughs> oh, man. The spank bank? Mom. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Let's cross it. Mom, tell your best friend I'm really sorry about that phone Actually, call. Actually, it's interesting because yeah. the current pope is talking about letting priests marry now. That would be fantastic. Well, that was, that was just going to bring that up. I was just going to bring that up. Like, that's one of the issues I have is I don't understand that. Like, now, talking about demons and You're how You're supposed they can... to be devoted to God. Yeah, Your world correct. is supposed to Yeah, but to in the very, very, not... very, 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 very beginning, it wasn't like that. They're the beginning of the well, church. I don't, I don't think... Catholic church has always been that way. Are you Basically, sure? yeah. the apostles, right? Yeah. When, when the Catholic church was developed, you know, a hundred years after Christ died, those were the standards. And I mean, you had, uh, you, how do you want to call it? Uh, all the way to like the Knights Templars. Okay. These were all people that were extremely devout Catholics. And so they looked at the priest as being like that person who speaks for God. And so therefore cannot be corrupted by man, which is first off the stupidest thing to do because you are man, you know, and you're right. not God of or God like you are dude. <laughs> yeah, and you have the the same needs and wants, but they yep. I guess they kind of figured in the Catholic Church that if you could overcome your needs and wants, that gets you closer to God. And like every you know from every pope, so on and so forth, they want to be considered saints. In in, in mm -hmm. that in that, mm -hmm. so if you can abstain from all of these things, then that brings you closer to sainthood. Mm -hmm. And then you got to go through all the rites after you pass away. So they look for certain signs, mm -hmm. you know, after your death, uh, is, is his body still, you know, is, is it decomposed, decomposed, like you know, they go through, mm -hmm. there's a like lot. Saint it's kind of weird. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Uh, there's but, a joke in there, but I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, that's kind of what they do. And, and here's the thing is, is, you know, man is a faulty creature. And sooner or later, you know, you can only be tempted by something so long before you act on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is just man-like. And so to be surprised that, you know, a, a father did this or something like that. I mean, how is that possible? I know. Yeah. Uh, that's in the, the Catholic church is so big and you have so many priests. Like mm -hmm. I'm well, sure and you have access to kids and you're going to have pedophiles going toward that yeah, because you have access to children. Right. And believe it or not, nuns getting raped. Oh, really? That's an oh, issue, yeah. too? Oh, yeah. that, but the, it's in the Catholic Church, and so they're not going to talk about it. Uh, oh, of course yeah. not. Uh, and that's the other away. problem that the Catholic Church had is in the when that started to happen, and they didn't address it, address yeah. it, charges, all that, because they were protecting the, mm -hmm. the image mm -hmm. of the church. The people who go down that road were like, this is a safe place for me to go. If I get yeah. caught, I'm just going to get moved parishes. Yep. I'm going to— And that's yeah. what they did. And that's yeah. what happened. So they kind of attracted it. Yeah. What would make more sense is to have 
priest be able to get married? And then if one wants to go off as a spiritual journey and get really monk about it, then yeah, don't have a family and go live in the caves and you can get in a higher level of consciousness or whatever you want to do. But the norm would be nice to have well, that's, that. That's, that's yeah. why the, uh, uh, what do you call them? The, not the Mennonites, the uh, Amish, they have a thing called a Rumspringer. Mm-hmm. And that basically is uh, these, when you're young, okay, you're 16, 17 years old, whatever, you have basically one night of debauchery. Go out and do whatever you want to do. Drink. <laughs> That's the purge, right? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. kind of like that drink, uh, you know, fight, fuck, do whatever. They don't care. You're not going to get turned on or shunned by the church. Okay. Uh-huh. But you only have one time you get to do this. Okay. Now, if you, after the next day, you got to make a choice. Is that the lifestyle that you want? Mm-hmm. Or now are you going to follow God, the church, and, and your family? Uh-huh. And if you choose to go that lifestyle, you get shunned and they will never talk to you again. They'll turn their back on you. Okay. Hmm. Or you go and now you live your life as an Amish, you get married, you raise a barn, whatever else they do. Uh, <laughs> but you, know, you see what I'm saying? And, and I, I, I think that's uh, kind of what the Catholic church should do. Mm-hmm. Right. They should have their own Rome Springer. Mm-hmm. So when a new priest comes in and now he's going to, you either got your choice of joining the Vatican or not, you know, so go out and have your one night of debauchery. Mm-hmm. And as long as it's not too illegal, you know, <laughs> yeah. come illegal. back to the church and, and we'll support your, 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 your ways, you know, and now you have your choice. Yeah. So the, 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 the your training in demonic, what did that entail? I don't know. I mean, I don't want you to go in and uh, oh, have I have to do anyway. everything, but yeah. But just, uh, it just uh, entails a lot of uh, book reading, a lot of studying, um, a lot of, uh, I don't know, spiritual quest. I guess. Mm-hmm. How many cases do you roughly get a year? Is it pretty? Uh, well, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not confirmed by the Catholic Church, so I oh, can't. So now on your own, I guess then. Yeah. Well, yeah. I uh, do like assisting. Okay. Um, and then I, I got uh, a father that I work with who is actually one of the top exorcists for the Vatican. Oh wow. So I work with him. Okay. You know, on things, uh, but as far as being able to do the right, I'm not confirmed. Okay. So I, I can't. You're like do support it. then. Exactly. And you've never had anything come home with you, mess with you. Have you noticed oh, an uptick I've, of I've, things? I've plenty of instances. Well, not demonically that have come come home with me, but I've had you know spiritual en- energy that I guess liked me enough that it wanted to come hang out with me. Um, I just didn't want to hang out with it. <laughs> how know? do you get rid of it? How, how would you? Um, do to- well, this goes back to the bathroom story. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's always in the bathroom. <laughs> I knew it was going to turn up here somehow. <laughs> so much for signing that piece of paper. There you go. <laughs> um, well, okay, here's this thing, and Britt likes to laugh about it, and I'm sure you guys all will too, and I don't care. <laughs> I'm confident in my own structure, all right? Every once in a while, I like to get up 3 o'clock in the morning, okay? It's kind of like my witching hour, mm-hmm. and it's because I have sleep apnea and I can't sleep. Mm. And so I, I go and I try to relax by turning on a really hot shower and letting the steam and everything, and I'll just sit there in the bathtub letting the shower and the steam hit on sit. me until I'm <laughs> totally <Sit>. relaxed. <laughs> Right. When I'm totally relaxed, then I go and then guess what? I fall asleep and I sleep really well. Yeah. So every once in a while I have to do that. Well, I went to an investigation and uh, it, something must have came home with me. It was a graveyard uh, in Sunland, California. Mm. And uh, I had some of the most unique and weirdest experiences. Like uh, when I first got there, uh, it was pouring down rain and pitch black. And here I'm at the cemetery. And uh, by the way, people don't do them by yourself. I chose to do this one by myself. And that was probably the stupidest thing I could have done. Um, because I got there and first thing is, is I'm right at the gate. I'm talking to, uh, one of my friends on the phone and I'm like, okay, well I'm here at the gate. So I'm about ready to go and I got to turn this off. So I turn my phone off and put it in my pocket. All of a sudden a song starts playing on my phone. Oh, wow. Going, where have you been? Blah, blah, blah. That was some of the words in wow. there, you know? And so I'm thinking, what the, I don't have a ringtone. Like, and so I look and I'm looking at my phone and it's not even on, but yet my phone is playing this song. It's Britney Spears he's listening to. Yeah. <laughs> Justin <laughs> Can't Bieber. Can't go wrong with that. It's yeah. Justin Bieber. Um, and anyway, so I, I go and so I and literally, I shut my phone off because that right there is sign number one that this is probably not good to be doing by myself, but I yeah. go and do it anyway because I'm stupid. And so, yeah, and I go in there and I start doing all this stuff and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm not really getting anything, but I'm feeling a lot of stuff and, and seeing a lot of stuff. And then of course it's raining really bad. So God only knows, you mm-hmm. know? So I think, mm-hmm. you know what, I'm just going to pack it up and go home because I probably shouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. So I get into my Land Rover and uh, realized that this big rock had came, slid down the hill and pinned my Land Rover in to where I couldn't 
move without ripping off the front of my truck. No Jeez. way. Yeah. And so that's why the front of my truck's ripped off. Um, I wasn't going <laughs> to hang around. So I, I literally got out of there by ripping off the front of my truck. And uh, on my way home, my lights turn on and go off. Radio comes on, goes off. And it kept doing that all the way home. And then, you know, right before I got home, the car died. And then I went to start it back up again and fired up like nothing ever happened. Everything was working just fine. Was your friend back on? Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ghosts. They don't know how to do their job. Um, but I got home and, and, and parked the vehicle in the uh, driveway. And I go in the house and I'm not thinking anything of it. And like I said, like a week later, uh, we noticed some weird things started happening in the house. Like we'd hear bang, you know, mm. and nobody's around. Uh, the closet in the hallway kept opening. And so mm. I'd close it, come back from the kitchen, open again. I'm like, what the hell's going on yeah. here? I it's actually I had to have Patty come bless the house because mm-hmm. it got that bad. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was doing lots of things. Well, back to the shower. Uh, I'm, I'm in the shower and I'm, I'm totally relaxed, right? Next thing I know, the you know the thing that holds the shampoo right, yeah, on the yeah. shower and everything else? It literally flew off and smacked me right in the face. Jeez. Yeah. Oh Jesus! And and so I got up and in me like a you know I'm not I'm, I'm not afraid actually if anything it pisses me off uh-huh. right. you know and so I get it and I slam it back up onto the wall and I'm like leave me the fuck alone and I go back and I'm sitting down and I'm thinking okay well I noticed that it had slid a little bit but it didn't go all the way so I'm thinking okay whatever it is maybe it's smart enough to just leave me alone because I'm getting angry mm-hmm. nope now behind me on our other rack we have shampoo bottles in the little holster thing. Mm-hmm. His shampoo came out of the rack and smacked me in the back of the head. Jeez. And so that's right after that, I called Patty and I said, whatever's here has got to go because it's getting wow. violent. <laughs> you know what, what did she, did she send she something? In, mm. She did. Yeah. And she, she sensed the kind of what I was thinking too, because mm-hmm. I didn't even tell her, but she knew that it came from someplace I was at. And I said, yeah, I was recently at a graveyard wow. with who? Myself. Oh my God. <laughs> That's exactly what Patty said. Oh my God. <laughs> now, is yeah. it helpful to bring someone to those type of things because you it always uses want, the attention of the thing? You always want to paranormal investigate with somebody because you don't know. And, and that's a great example. You don't know what you might come across. Plus, okay. you could trip and hit your head. You know, I mean, you're in the dark. You're yeah. in strange yeah. places. Your car gets Ooh. pinned. You want to get yeah. that yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, you want to get that on. So you need to trip truck someone truck. while you're running out so they yeah. get taken and not you. Yes. So speaking, <laughs> speaking of. Uh, attack him, attack him. I'll get out of here. So back to showers again. Uh-huh. Wait, oh, I'm talking oh, about yesterday. Wow, wow. What? Oh, yesterday you have a shower oh. story? <laughs> so <laughs> together. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. It's just now for, he thinks it's something spooky, spooky, but so, he had the door knock thing happen. This is weird. Okay, so I'm at his house, spare bedroom, shower. The door has this hanger, and you really have to shove the door shut to make it So it close. shuts solid. So it's it like shut. not going anywhere unless you yank it open. You know, if you just rat a little notch in there, it'll fall down. Door shut, perfect. Oh, yeah. Just so we're just like feel lazy. <laughs> I just had to do. That's four right. He's a contractor. Last week. Yeah. He's a contractor. <laughs> it's like we it's have him on the show idea. for many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Home improvements. Yeah. <laughs> Home improvement hours up next. <laughs> so I don't want his kids running in, and you know, so I shut the door and in the shower. I'm in there for a while, and you know, just like you said, just a relaxing, while. Just a while. <laughs> How much yeah. conditioner? He do had you things use? to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just standing there, and I thought, and we were gonna. Sorry, kids. Yeah. Don't go in there, guys. You don't want to. <laughs> what Uncle Tim's doing. <laughs> so Tell anyway, me about the rabbits. <laughs> I thought he was getting annoyed because we had some stuff to do after. And uh, he's like, I thought he would like grab the door and shook it. Like try now, to open you, it. Folks, you couldn't see the hand gesture. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying Shook right it. now, this was really inappropate. <laughs> Think shake weight. I'm going to church. How do you guys open doors? Go to YouTube you know, to see the hand gesture. You don't know, open doors like that? It's like, <laughs> it, was a, it was like someone grabbed the door and shook it really hard and like trying to open it. And the I thing it was is, him. The thing is, I heard it too because I was yeah. I was kneeling down checking something, and I heard kneeling it. Kneeling down <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice choice of words. Oh, this story is bad. It's not uh, shaping up how we. It's just not coming out. Well, there's a word, <laughs> <laughs> like it should. <laughs> okay, so, so so it was it was hard enough to where the shower has a lot of pressure. It's making noise. You know, like I, I definitely hear? heard it. Yeah, right. it wasn't like a something falling. Well, the down point is, or, I heard it too. Yeah, and I was. And how nearby. far away from the room were you? I was, he was probably outside 10, the room. 20 feet. Yeah, because I was like, it's a small house, and, and it's the door shaking. Picking. Yeah, and it felt like somebody took the door. How mm-hmm. close like, to the roadway to are you? Um, oh, not close at all. Not a, close enough for that. R- the, yeah, residential. No cars are going by. I, I yeah. can hear cars really easily when they go by the front of the house. Um, so it's either a heat thing of the heat in there expanding and messing with the door a little bit, or he's got something that likes to fuck with him when he's behind doors. Yeah, because this, <laughs> I, I, I've been in his house multiple times. I've never had this. 
done. Sh- you know, so did you check when you, when, when you got out? Did you look at the door? Did I did. Like, nothing fell. Oh yeah, he shook it. He was all concerned. He's like, dude, did that it, wasn't did, you. Did it match dude. the sound? Because I yelled at him. Like, I'm coming out. Relax. And and you heard like, me. What the hell are you coming talking out? about? Um, and it wasn't him. So, and, so and, when you shook the door and did, all, did it sound the same? No, no. This so was a, this was like someone had to grab it and shake it. It almost like if the door was jammed, you kind of put your shoulder into it a little so bit. So you couldn't could reenact well, the sound. To which the door was jammed because you because of the yeah. wedge up top. But so you had to have like a human being grab the door and right. hit it to make that noise. Like it's not going to do it on its own. So the door wasn't like partially <coughs> open no. or anything. Like I mean, yeah. you showed it secure, it was still secure. Yeah, if it, from I, what appeared to be, yeah, huh? which was weird. I mean, so, it's, that's the thing is like just, when you were talking about cupboards <laughs> being open, some violence kind of stuff happening. Uh, do you not call someone? Because, like, the whole concept of the show Who are you right, call? is like Doomsday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see the yeah. new Ghostbusters trailer? How did you come up with that good. name? What does the name mean? What, so what it's is... like Dad's Doomsday Guide under any extreme situation. What's the plan to do it? So then we have people on who kind of know what they're talking about. Run. And then, yeah, yeah, you can tell us, hey, what's the best plan if this is happening? So if you do have something happening, like a people. haunting, what do, you, yeah, what do you do? Well, first off, try to do your own uh, homework and disprove it because nine times out of ten, it's mm. something that's just natural. Right. You know, it's right. not haunting. It's not, you know, a ghost. Um, but after you swim through all of those and you still come back to the same thing, mm-hmm. run. Yeah, that's yeah. What I did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, besides that, um, if you're you know locked into a mortgage and whatnot, and you can't, yeah. um, and the wife thinks you're crazy. Um, <laughs> after you do the homework and you, you call, okay, there's no plausible, there's no logical explanation for this. Look around for an organized group. Mm-hmm. Do your homework on the group though. I mean, yeah. really look into it. If you go to their website and everything's fucking haunted, that's not the group for you. Okay. Because they want the place to be haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, there are there are legitimate groups out there that do good work and they'll come in, they'll set a bunch of equipment up so you don't have to buy it unless you want to buy it. There you go. Um, that's what we do. Yeah. Um all things paranormal. There you go. <laughs> ATP. <laughs> it's a good name actually. I yeah, like it. I like yeah. It. yeah. It flows. So, um so yeah, do that. They have to come in. They'll do their thing, and they'll you know they'll sh- they'll they'll do their investigation, try and figure it out for you. Should people be spending money for that? I mean, no. what's reasonable and no. what's yeah, you not? Don't, there's no. enough people that do it for free. You do not have to spend money for it. Okay, you do not have to spend money. For and it. most people that are charging you are charlatans anyway. I was gonna yeah, say, so people look part, out yeah. for that. No. Okay, because um, I think like the biggest thing is one, people lying about experiences, but then if you're having a real experience, getting someone who's legit enough to come in there and help you figure it out any, and not any, take advantage of you. Any real investigator does it for the research and the experience. They don't do it for monetary gain. Okay, that's why we have shows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, I mean, and there's a lot of like dads like us, just guys like us. Like we know a little bit, and we're like fascinated by, it, but we don't know enough. Yeah. To it, act on ourselves. And if things or, hit the level where you were happening, where right. shit's coming out of and hit me in the face, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, "What the hell? I need some well, help. I'm not doing this yeah. by myself." That's the only thing why I'm thinking because I we screw with the Ouija board. You know, we'd be kind of doing this kind of thing. So but now you open the door. Yeah. You so didn't I'm you like, close it? Well, we closed it at her house. I mean, Patty like, did. She said oh, nothing's going to follow you home. And I believe her. I don't think anything. Yeah, no. Oh, oh, see, she opened the veil and closed the veil there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. It's, so, I, I mean. I just whatever's going on in your house my, could be many things. My theory yeah. on it is this. For what you are what you guys are doing, you guys are just like tiptoeing around the edges and whatever. Right. Like as long as you're toilet, strong up here, mm-hmm. strong in here, you're fine. Exactly. That's you're, what I've been like, like. Whatever. You want to mess with me, mess with me. Yeah. people that Don't give it the power. Yeah. Yeah. The people that have stuff follow them home, if they're not like. Like Frank, who does it every day and goes into the deep dark stuff, but it's the people who want it to. They're 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 looking for some kind of, you know, I want my pet so I can be cool, you know, mm, type yeah, of thing within yeah. that community. Mm, yeah. You know, look at ghosts your pets too. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they're mentally challenged somehow. They're having you know mm-hmm. strife in their life right. or they're so. Well, did you? Long, long you're strong minded, you're fine. Tell them dad's story with the kids. Oh yeah, he just, yeah, just it's, it's just another another instance, and then like hearing stuff upstairs going up there, at that, at that him being really yeah. assertive and said, "I'm not leaving. I have to work here." Because he's got a kids playing at that old house, and there's nobody up there. It's up in the hills, mm-hmm. and so he's a very black and white, dirty, hairy guy, ex <laughs> ex cop. He's yeah. not, he doesn't buy into a lot of that stuff. But he said he g- gave him chills down his neck, and he was walking down the stairs. Going, so he does buy shit. into it. Well, after yeah, that, exactly. After that instance, after that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's and it could him. it could be residual too. Because sometimes yeah. when you hear like little kids laughing or whatever, it, it doesn't mean it's an intelligent haunting. It doesn't mean that anything's there. It's just something that's caught. It got okay. recorded somehow right. on some something that's in that zone. It that's just what, repeats. That's, that's what I wanted to ask you guys though about children mm-hmm. and innocence. How much of it could something be tricking you? And how do you Absolutely. know if it's tricking you? How do you Absolutely. you know you do like the, the seance? And it's like oh, this my loved one's here to see me, but really it's a demon gonna fuck with me. And Demons now, like to pre- pretend to be little girls. Whoa, it's, what? it's very weird. So, but they, so it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, or, and the reason why they pretend because, you know, 
if you see a little boy, I mean, yeah, oh, little boy, whatever. But if you see a little girl, especially as a dad, yeah, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, oh my yeah. God, you know, I want to help this little girl out and everything. Oh, well, that's the perfect bait, mm-hmm. you know. We're just fish in a pool. Yeah. yeah. And so they use what's going to work the best. And in, in nine times out of ten, the entity that most people see that ends up becoming demonic or, or is just a really bad spirit tends to come across as a little kid, a little girl. Oh. So during seances, so, do you think— Zozo does that a lot. So Zozo? He's one Zozo? of the demons. Oh. Does that a lot. Oh, really? Oh, I thought you were talking about Zug Zug. Zug Zug. <laughs> So, so you so, know demons by yeah. multiple, and because I, I know they was touched on before in the Exorcist interview we had, multiple names and how yeah. they kind of go in packs, and there'll be a lot of demons in a person if they are possessed, and you have to like weed them out and get to the main one, mm. and know their names, mm. and that is well, they'll they'll use tools to to get at you because like okay, people like haunted dolls. Okay, I hate dolls, <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to tell you right now, a doll itself is not haunted or possessed. Okay. Okay. The entity will use that as a device. Like I use trigger devices to communicate with them or to get them active. Mm -hmm. Right. They kind of use the same thing to us. So like a little kid, you know, a great case was the Warrens. You've seen the Annabelle movies. Mm -hmm. All right. Annabelle, first off, is not that ridiculous doll that Warner Brothers came up with. Although cool is not the actual doll. The actual doll is a Raggedy Ann doll. Oh. And the Warrens still have that in the Warren Museum. And that doll right there, a demonic entity, basically used that as a catalyst to possess a little boy. Okay. And the Warrens were good enough with how they do things back in the day. They both passed, but how they did things back in the day to keep that. They got it away from, they did, you know, an exorcism and all that. And they got the doll away from the little boy. Mm -hmm. And now the doll is in a case and it's locked up and it says do not open, you know, on it. Hermetically sealed. Yeah, hermetically sealed. And now, now it just sits in that case. But that's just a good case note on how those things work out. They use things to manipulate, you know, and again, the little girls, mm-hmm. hearing the little girl voices, uh, uh, dolls, uh, things that you might, you know, outside of a coffee cup, you know, right. that you might, you know, find partial mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. I mean, the Dybbuk box, that's kind of more of a Jewish thing, but mm-hmm. you know, nevertheless, same concept. I guess so. Yeah. To finish this up, what would be, I don't know, you don't have to give me a big number if it's, uh, 25, if you don't have <laughs> your top yeah. three tips as far as for a family or anyone in a situation, either they're haunted or you got something you think is demonic going on something, or since you guys seem to have a firm grasp of like kind of the UFO phenomenon and things going on, if it's not wanted, what do you do to kind <laughs> of get out of it versus <laughs> handling it yourself? Cause I feel like that's not the greatest idea. Well, you have to – if you think you're having activity happening and the whole family is experiencing it, find a local team that mm-hmm. can come in with the equipment and start figuring it out. The local team will have – hopefully, if they're good, they'll have a, a, a reach into the community and they can find a priest or someone that can come in and do an exorcism or – Yeah, they know shamans or all that. You know, whatever. I mean my personal experience after all those places I've been, all the things I've seen, it seems like the only mojo that works is the Catholic stuff. I mean, oh, really? The Native Americans come in, they do their thing, and it dies down, and it goes away for a while, but it always comes back. The you know, interesting. But for whatever reason, when the Catholic Church comes in, it's like, geez, it just went scorched earth and destroyed <laughs> everything, and it doesn't come back. So, okay. but bottom line is, but for the for the most part, you don't even need that. Mm-hmm. Quite honestly, if you want to just start and see if you can, just talk to it. Look, my kids play here. You're scaring them. You know, when we're not home, you can do whatever you want. But when we're home, please respect our space. You know, mm-hmm. if it's an intelligent haunting. Yeah. It will be able to, you know, grasp that. Now, obviously, if bad things keep going on, then your options become limited. If you have children involved, again, the team is a very big thing. But let your team also be your advisor and follow what they say. Because sometimes it's not like we want to tell somebody to move out of their house. Mm -hmm. But if the activity is bad and it is affecting the children, then, you know, what's wrong with finding another house? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You got to walk away. Unless the market's down. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if you're in So it could be that bad to where you can't clear it. It Exactly. Sometimes sometimes they just won't go. Wow. Uh, You know, I mean, there's been cases where that's actually happened. I mean, think about it. One of my ex-girlfriends had a home, bought a home that was built by hand by a husband and wife team. And that place is haunted. And they think it's by the guy who built it. And he will not leave. 
But he built it from scratch. He grew mm-hmm. up on the land, built the home from scratch, and died there. Let's put They're it this way. They're not going to leave. Yeah, let's put it this way. If you were building, a, a, if you built a house, a house you love and everything else, and then you died there in that house, and then you didn't realize that you died, and now you're there in the spirit world, and here it is uh, 100 years later or whatever, somebody comes in here, and they you, you start noticing walls disappearing, things <laughs> changing. Yeah. You know, wouldn't yeah. that piss you off a little bit yeah. and you might start activity. And that's why most hauntings generally occur when people start messing with a dwelling, Interesting. remodeling, so on and so forth. Like there's been plenty of people who say, I've never had any spiritual activity in this house, but then all of a sudden we started building our guest bedroom and (laughs) well, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, how weird. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. kind of like the others. You remember mm-hmm. seeing that with Nicole yeah. Kidman when they didn't know they were dead and they were like uh, mm-hmm. trying to get the people out or something like that. That was that one, I think. <clears> or Sixth Sense. Yeah. Yes. Bruce, the whole Bruce yep. Willis yeah. thing. And, you know, it's like, what, I'm dead? What? We don't make, we just don't make movies about stuff like this. It comes from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. if you think about it in, in an explanation of the other side, it's very possible. I mean, let's say you're walking down the street and God forbid, smack, get killed by a truck. You don't know that. Last minute, you remember you're walking down the street. Now I hear you're still there and you keep walking, you keep going. Then you all of a sudden notice that the world's changed. Things are changing around mm-hmm. you. And that could make that energy or your energy Boy, very that corrupt. last seven minutes of your brain being alive could be pretty torturous and thoughts mm-hmm. of energy. And mm-hmm. True. I mean, think about that. You got the ax coming down to split your head open and, you know, it's like <laughs> that, that blast of energy of, oh, fuck, I'm about to be dead. Yeah. I guess I should get up on the mic, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever, you get hit by the bus or, you get, or you're get, you drowning, but your brain lives about seven minutes afterwards. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what they used to do in the Inquisition when they chop your head off. Mm-hmm. They grab your head and show you your body. Oh, uh, what? Your jaw would be, uh, yeah, because your brain is still rolling. Your they used to do that with blinking. the heart, too. The Japanese, they yeah. cut your heart out and show it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so your last oh. I mean, images of life, if it's tragic like that, I mean, mm-hmm. unless your head's squashed like a grape, but your brain is still firing yeah. about, until it's out of oxygen and dead. It's about seven minutes. We hear a lot about energy blast. Like, that's a tragic. Thing. <laughs> yeah. But back to your thing. The point, the, the, three, the three points. One, just talk to it. Yep. Just, if it's intelligent, just talk to it. Yep. Okay. And maybe you yeah. can come to an agreement. It, 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 believe it or not, it works a lot. Okay. If it's not going away and you need it to go away, you got to get a local team in there that can document what's going on because the Catholic Church and any really serious, ex- they will not come out unless there's some kind of investigation going right. on and research and documentation. Talk team or get out. Yeah. yeah. There's your yeah. three. Talk yeah. team or get out. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then if you can't, if it, if it won't go, you got a decision to make. You got to live with it. Now, or you're gonna move. Now again, if you can get your ghost to do party tricks, our address. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Killer parties. Well, thank you both for coming on. I really appreciate it and spending the time and giving Thanks, us guys. your expertise. And where can they find your show? Yeah, you can find us at uh, allthingsparanormal.la. And it's been our pleasure being on your guys' show. Maybe one time we can get you. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be you great. Know. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. I mean, we'll talk about. Squid Pro Row. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to cover it. It was interesting just getting into the conspiracy stuff with you guys, but that's really fascinating too. And we're going to get to that, those things. Yeah. Which yeah, one's like a rabbit hole you just go down and you yeah, just keep and going? Yeah, you start diving deeper. And you got to like change I've topics. got shit for decades. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. All right, guys, thank, guys. You. Thanks. thank you. Thank you.